The Added Time Podcast. Hello, welcome back to the Added Time Podcast. I think this is about um, episode nine or something, closely coming up to episode ten. Uh, been a while, uh, had some busy schedules. Schedules. Uh, James had a lot of work, um, but that, that's a good uh, chance for me to introduce him. I'm T.S. Combert, of course, joined by James Ward, as usual. How are you? Working hard or hardly working, you decide. Um, yeah, good to be back in the studio with the boys. Uh, and to my left, um, the, the the main event of the show, Harry Martin. Wow, guys, it's really great to be joining you today. You know, we're in a new environment. We're in a quite hot shed today filming. We've got a new studio just for today, just for you guys. And, you know, I'm really excited to get into this show. You know, we had a little hiatus, but hopefully we'll be back. You know, when the new season's back, we'll be a bit more strict on our deadlines. But, you know, since the restart, it's all been a mess and so have we. Yeah, we'll be aiming for um, every Monday to uh, get a podcast out. So make sure you're uh, subscribed to uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and of course our YouTube. Wherever you listen on there today, uh, we're going to be actually previewing the Champions League and Europa League, which are fastly approaching this week, uh, starting on uh, Wednesday, I think, with the Europa League. But uh, we'll talk about the Champions League first, because that's what everyone wants. Uh, so we'll talk about the last 16 first, and then we'll make our bold predictions for who's going to win it. Of course, last year we actually did a Champions League preview podcast in which we all picked picked a winner and uh, James picked uh, Man City, Harry picked Juventus and I picked uh, Barcelona uh, none of them won uh, I mean, Barcelona got the furthest so I guess I'll, I'll take the kudos there but uh, this year looking at the last 16 of course um, there's some fixtures still to be played, Man City hosts Real Madrid, Juventus hosts Lyon Barcelona against Napoli and Bayern Munich against Chelsea all them pretty even games apart from the Chelsea game. So let's start with that one, Harry. Get out of the way. Uh, do you think there's any chance of a comeback here? Well, you never know. You know, we beat them in their backyard at the Allianz Arena to win the Champions League 2012. You know, there's always belief, but I mean, it's pretty unlikely. And I've got to be honest, they're my tip to win the Champions League this year. They look incredible since it, is it Hansi Flicks took over yeah, for Bayern. Right. And since then, I think they scored like 100 goals in like 18 games or something in the Bundesliga, which is absolutely ridiculous. And yeah, I think our attack could challenge them, but they're just, their attack is just ridiculous against our very weak defence. And I think they're my tip to win the Champions League this year, our current form. Yeah, so Harry's given you a bit of a uh, taste into who he thinks is going to be winning. Uh, let's look at some of the other games. Of course, uh, Man City were quite keen on last year, James. They're taking a 2-1 lead into the Etihad Stadium, but it's a very different Real Madrid side. Of course, they've just won the league, but then Man City have also uh, really upped the form, scoring a bag load of goals. Uh, what do you think is going to happen in that one? Uh, I quite fancy uh, Man City in that one, just to just to steal the show again, as they did against Real Madrid in the first leg. Um, I, I, just, I just don't fancy Real Madrid at all. Uh, I think City have had more competitive games since the restart, obviously. Uh, Real Madrid might take their foot off the gas after having won the La Liga. Um, City obviously still got still got a trophy to win this season, so um, I feel like th- this is this is the one for them. I, I tipped them last year, and um, I wouldn't be against tipping them again this year from from this stage onwards. To be fair, um, there's only a few teams in there I think can trouble them, and, and perhaps a couple of dark horses in there. But um, yeah, I think City look pretty strong going into this. Uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Of course, then there's re- two really interesting games. Of course, uh, in Turin, we've got Juventus, who've got to come back from a 1-0 uh, deficit against Leon. Uh, that will be interesting, to be fair. Leon look a really good team, of course, with uh, Dembele and Depay up front. Uh, some great young players. Uawa, however you say that. I have no idea. Uh, but they look really good. Uh, they held uh, PSG last night in the cup final all the way to penalties. So, I mean, that shows their defensive... Uh, I think they play a three at the back. Uh, so all they need to do is not concede against Juventus and they're free to play either Man City or Real Madrid in the uh, quarterfinal. Uh, and then Barcelona against Napoli. You'd expect Barcelona to win against the Napoli side who haven't been great in Serie A, but they've just signed Auss- Aussie men for uh, £75 million, pounds, more than Pepe. So uh, good money for Lille. But uh, any objections there, guys? Uh, what do you think? Um, I did watch the uh, Coupe de la Liga last night as I was at work, you know, not much else to do. And, you know, I was impressed with them, but their attack looked very blunt last night. And I think that's what let them down. 
that uh, Lopez in goal was sensational. I think he made eight saves in the 90 minutes, which is ridiculous. So, yeah, he's definitely been hard to beat. But with Juventus, I think they lost to Cagliari. I don't, I don't know where I'm pronouncing that right recently. But they said they're going to arrest Ronaldo and quite a lot of players for the final game this season. So, they should be very fresh. And I think with it being in Turin, I do fancy them to turn that one around just because of Leon's blunt attack. Well, that's why I thought. And with Aussie men, I think that's ridiculous. 75 million. Like, he looked all right, but maybe 50. Like, we got Werner for 50. I think that is a ridiculous price for him. And Napoli, I don't really know whether that's a big up step up in his career, really, or whether he's going to be there long term. I think that's a very strange transfer. What do you think, James? Uh, well, I agree on the Aussie men transfer. Um, I've been listening to a lot of talk sport controversially recently. And um, Napoli don't even seem to be at the races in the uh, in the Serie A anymore, to be honest. Uh, it seems to be more of an Atalanta-Juventus um, uh, wave ride, you could say, at the moment. Um, I quite fancy Juventus to get through over Lyon. Uh, don't think Lyon have much attacking threat. And um, Napoli, I don't back to beat Barcelona. So I feel like it's going to be Barcelona and uh, Juventus escaping from them two ties. Yeah, and uh, the way the draw has been done, it's actually it's going to be quite an interesting final, of course. So if you look at um, who we got tipped to be in one half of the quarterfinals, it'd be Man City v Juventus and Barcelona against Bayern Munich. And then the winner of those two games playing each other. So you could have a, a Man City Bayern Munich semi final. But then on the other side is where it gets really interesting because uh, Leipzig and Atletico play each other and Atalanta and PSG play each other. And then the, one, of, one of those four teams is going to the final. I mean, quite. Uh, Teams who, who all haven't won the Champions League before. So I think they'll be really interesting. Uh, that Atalanta PSG game is uh, certainly the one which I think is going to be the most, most interesting. Atalanta look great. Uh, Mbappe's injured. Harry, you got any thoughts on that? Um, I actually quite fancy Atalanta in this game. The 98 goals in the, uh, in the Serie A this season. And the only, their only weakness is their defence. But also, I think that about PSG, ageing defence. I think they've got Bernat, Kazawa. Marquinhos, Thiago Silva, what's he, 36, and he's leaving at the end of the season. I think that is it. And also, their midfield is quite bare. They've got Adrissa Gay. They're playing Marquinhos in CDM last night. And, yeah, I'm not too impressed with their midfield or defence. I think Atalanta, with their lethal attack, I think the best in Syria. I think they could definitely exploit PSG. And I actually quite fancy them to get to the semi-finals. Uh, yeah, looking at the other one, James, Atletico against Leipzig, that's confirmed. Uh, what do you think of that? Of course, Leipzig don't have Werner anymore, so that's going to be a uh, big loss for them. Uh, I think that's a, a foregone conclusion before kickoff, to be honest here. Uh, I think Le- uh, Leipzig are going to get trounced by Atletico Madrid. Um, Atletico still looks strong. They, they seem to look strong year upon year, even though they keep, keep losing their sort of uh, vocal point each season. Um, but yeah, I, I fancy I fancy Atletico to get through there, and then um, completely agree with Harry. I think Atalanta could get to the to the semis, and then um, mm-hmm. what's saying they won't get to the final? I I think they've got a really really strong chance of getting to the final, and what a wild card that is after just escaping the group in the end. So um, yeah, really fancy Atalanta this year, but um, yeah, it's definitely going to be Atletico from the other the other game. Uh, yeah, finishing up then with our predictions of who's going to win the uh, tournament. I think. Uh, I'll go in and say uh, it's going to be between Man City and Bayern and whoever wins that semi-final for me. Uh, they both look like the two uh, standout contenders this year, of course. Uh, Man City could be up against Lyon in the uh, quarter-final, which would uh, be quite a, a nice route to play Bayern. And then, so that semi-final really will do it for me. And then they should have a, uh, I wouldn't say easier, but um, a less uh, uh, firepower on the pitch kind of side. And Atlanta, they don't have those big names. So I'm going to throw my hat and say it's going to be Bayern Munich simply because they just look unstoppable in the Bundesliga. And uh, Man City still have issues uh, this season, which uh, we yet to see if they've been resolved yet. Of course, they lost against Chelsea and one of the only big teams they played towards the end season. Uh, Harry, you said Bayern Munich as well. Any more comments on them? Uh, no, I really can't see past them, to be honest. Yeah, and as you say about Atalanta not having many big names, but I think sometimes that comes in to help you. They're just a good unit. There's no egos in that team. And, you know, they all provide for each other. There's no one that necessarily needs to get the goals. Whereas a team like PSG, they need Neymar and Mbappe. And Mbappe missing, of course. So, I actually, I'll go Atalanta for my long shot pick to actually win the Champions League. But, yeah, I've got to stick with Bayern. I think 
most people would say they're the form team in Europe and their squad and depth is just ridiculous. So I, you can't really see past them. Uh, I'm, I'm going to put my, uh, my my neck on the line here. Uh, we love an underdog here at added time and I'm going to go Atalanta to, to win the Champions League. Uh, it's got to happen some year. Leicester won the Prem. I mean, have we ever had a, a real underdog win the Champions League? Always seems to be one of the giants at, at some point. Um, well, other than Porto, obviously, but um, they, they had the best manager in the world at the time. Um, I think Atalanta, yeah, balls on the chopping board, so to speak. And I think Atalanta are going to take the take take the biscuit, let's say. Uh, final word I will say on the Champions League, which will go in Atalanta's favour, is these quarterfinals and semifinals will be one leg only, which uh, it, do, it does help. I mean, in a two-leg game, you can't really hide anything. You've got to be pretty good to get through two legs, but one leg you can kind of, you can kind of just defend and uh, escape with a one nil um, last minute or penalty win. So, yeah, that's really going to help them. Champions League is going to be very interesting. That's all kicking off this week. Uh, moving on into the Europa League, which I think is uh, also going to be quite an interesting competition. Some big names in there like Inter Milan and uh, Man United. Uh, guys, any thoughts on uh, who you may have to back this competition? Um, oh, you can't look past United. Uh, they've been on fire since the restart. Greenwood really, really looking like some some real player there. Uh, Fernandez has carried them through this time as well. Um, and I, and also I fancy Wolves as well. I think it's going to be the two English clubs taking uh, taking it away this season. Unfortunately, one of them is going to have to knock knock the other one out in the uh, in the quarters, I believe it is. But um, I think it or in, on the semis. I think it's going to be United uh, this season. Um, like they did a few seasons back as well. Um, I, I can't, I can't see them not winning it. To be honest, Harry, what, what's your thoughts? Um, I, yeah, I think you've got a fancy United just in current form, but I obviously would fancy in some land squad wise. I think they have a great team, but after bottling the league, that title challenge, they've sort of faded away, and they're not really got much momentum. Whereas United are the complete opposite. But United would have stopped playing a bit earlier than Inter. They would have maybe be a bit fresher. I don't really know. But I also think for Inter, Getafe are quite really hard side to beat. They don't let in many goals. Most of their games are one nil wins. Like They don't do many goals. So I don't know. That's going to be a tough game for me. Yeah, so I, again, can't really see past United. Quite boring, but I think many people agree. And also Wolves. I think many people aren't talking about Wolves, but... They look really good in the Premier League and I think, why can't they continue that into the Europa League? I think they've got a great side on paper. Maybe their depth isn't there like United, but yeah, I think Wolves are a shout as well. Uh, yeah, what I will say about Inter Milan's game is uh, that would have been a lot tougher game if it was uh, pre-Covid because Getafe were top four at that stage and they've really thrown that away, a bit like Leicester in the La Liga. Um, yeah, Man United and Wolves seem to maybe be lining up in the semi-finals uh, but Seville and Roma will, Roma will of course uh, have words to say about that. Seville have looked really good in La Liga since the restart and we all know they love this competition. Uh, on the other side Inter Milan and Bayer Leverkusen might be meeting in the quarters. That could be a really interesting game. Of course uh, the question will be will Havertz still be there? That might be a uh, real um, big factor and whether Bayer Leverkusen can uh, get past Inter but um, I, I do fancy Inter Milan to be fair they've looked really strong since the restart they've uh, kind of pushed themselves into um, fighting for the title ahead of Lazio and uh, with Atalanta of course uh, but you know United I'm, I'm not quite convinced on them yet to be honest I can easily see them uh, getting knocked out by Wolves or even Seville so uh, for that reason I'm going to go with uh, Inter Milan as my pick James, you, you look disgusted. Have you got any debate on that? I just, just think the United slander's gone past the point of laughable at this point. Um, how on earth you can doubt them after the way they came back after the restart to then finish third in the league behind only the two great teams, Liverpool and City. I mean, the, the slander's horrific at this point. Um, it's just, you know you know what, guys? I, I, I'm close to giving up here. Tears of slander each week is just getting more and more unbearable. Um, I hope you guys are, aren't suffering like me. Yeah, well, it seems to be an interesting competition <clears throat> anyway. Uh, this has been a nice little uh, short uh, preview episode for you guys. I hope you can uh, should whet the appetite for some European football, of course. Uh, we've also got this month for uh, Community Shield. Uh, playoff final is going to be on Tuesday. Make sure you're watching that. Um, I'm sure we will uh, 
say some words after it. Harry, you got any last words? Well, at the playoff final, we may have a cheeky vlog, or at, uh, at the Box Park, we may do a cheeky on the phone podcast, a little cheeky release while we're there. You never know, guys. I'll watch out for some content with that. So, yeah, I think we've got to look forward to these little tournaments. I think they're going to be really good. Something to whet the appetite for the new season, and it's going to be exciting. So, yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, thanks, guys, for watching. Uh, keep posted. Remember, Mondays is going to be our new uh, scheduled time for getting out podcasts. But, uh, yeah, thanks for keeping with us, and uh, stay safe. <laughs>